Now we have a special feature. The legendary New York restaurateur Danny Meyer talks about the food business. His restaurant, the Union Square Cafe, was a New York City landmark for decades. Now his shake shacks are all over the place. He spoke at the end of October at a dinner organized by The Nation in honor of the publication of the magazine's food issue. The event was held at his restaurant at the Whitney Museum. The restaurant is called Untitled. One of the things Danny Meyer talked about was why he's against tipping. I, th I think my uh, thinking on tipping has evolved dramatically in one way and not at all in another way. I wrote an article for the Union Square Cafe newsletter, um, which was the only way I could communicate back in the old days. And the article that I wrote for that was anti-tipping, but for a very different reason than I finally arrived at two years ago, two and a half years ago. Back then, it would just crush me when I would see a waiter in tears because they had been stiffed on a tip mm -hmm. and they thought they had given great service or they had been stiffed on a tip and the food was slow, but they had nothing to do with the food being slow. That was a, you know, an honest problem in the kitchen. Or maybe the guests were from London and they don't have a tipping culture. Or maybe someone was inebriated and they forgot. You, you just never knew. But it, it just always felt horribly. And, and the reason is that the tip was really all they were making because the uh, adjusted minimum wage for tipped employees back then uh, was, I believe, $2.13 an hour. I think what, what was much more moving a couple of years ago was a very different thing. I noticed two and a half years ago that the, the income disparity between cooks and tipped employees had grown dramatically, almost 30 times. And the reason is that it's against the law for tips to be shared with anyone who does not spend 80% of their time in a guest-facing role. You could get brought to court if you were to share tips with the cooks in the kitchen and by the way, why has why that disparity grown? Because a tip is a multiplier of a menu price. And menu prices have gone in one direction. In my career, menu prices have not only gone up dramatically and, and more quickly because of the cost of, of everything, whether it's your rent, whether it's the commodities, whether it's the underlying labor, whether it's the linen, whether it's insurance, health insurance, etc. And, and not only has the menu price gone up, but so too has the tip percentage itself. When I opened Union Square Cafe, 15%. So that went up to 17.5% when people said, I got it, let's just double the tax. And then it went up to 20% because mm -hmm. that was even easier math mm -hmm. after a few glasses right. of wine. So that's all good. But what's not good is that the, the cooks in the kitchen can't afford to live in New York. They've, they've been earning about... 30% more today per hour than they were earning in 1985. Then Danny Meyer was asked about the history and politics of tipping. The, the politics behind tipping goes all the way back to the abolition of slavery because the two industries in the United States that successfully petitioned the U.S. government to create dispensation where you would not have to pay your staff or your employees were the restaurant industry for the service staff and the Pullman train car industry, for the porters, because of this little known European bourgeois custom of tipping to show that you had some extra money. Mm. And so what is $2.13 today in this country in approximately, I should know the answer, but let's say something like 40 of the 50 states are still around $2.13 an hour all the way up from zero at the abolition of slavery. More and more states, the, they're, they're saying, why, why should there be, why should restaurants not be responsible for paying everybody? Why should you pay for that? Why should you decide what a waiter is worth? And meanwhile, the, the thing that I said in terms of the hoax is that the economic basis of dining out in this country is completely flawed. 
we have done a fantastic job over 25 years of convincing everyone in this room to pay a little bit more money for properly raised fruits and vegetables. Maybe organic, but at least safe. We, and, and seasonally grown and brought in by your favorite farmer and preserving land as a result. We've also convinced all of us over the last 10 years to pay a little bit more for cage-free eggs or chickens or you know, animals that have been raised with proper husbandry. And it just strikes me as being completely odd that, that the economics of the restaurant experience, and this is harder to break than ever because of the internet, where everyone knows what chicken should cost in a restaurant, <laughs> and there's 26,000 restaurants in New York, so the downward pressure on your ability to price is crazy. And the last thing we're willing to give on is people. The last thing we're willing to pay more money for is people. We just decided that the right thing to do for us is to stop blaming a system that we do not have to, we don't have to sustain that if we don't want to, to stop sustaining a system that, in addition to everything I just said, and, and including the disparity between what people can make, is that it's a dead-end drug. I know people, um, including my wife, who I met when she was a, an actress waiting on tables at a seafood restaurant in New York City in 1984. You make good enough money in, in New York. I'm not talking about Denny's and Applebee's where $2.13 and a little pinch right. will get you a good tip. And that's a sad story, but that's true. But you make good enough money in New York as a tipped employee that you end up not pursuing the very reason you came to New York in the first place. And you make good enough money as a tipped employee that you can actually not afford to then become a manager and pursue a career in hospitality if that's what you wanted to do. So we said, screw it. Let's, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's one of the hardest things I think we've ever undertaken as a restaurant empire. Oh, excuse me, collection. <laughs> It's hard, it's hard to get the math right on this, but we want to get to a point where the price you see on the menu is everything. Mm -hmm. There's no extra line to give a gratuity. You don't have to wonder you know, what you should be leaving because you got a bottle of wine worth this much or this much. And I'm really, really proud of, of, of the consumers who have said, let's give this a shot.